Students, this is Bilal Adil for the subject of English Intermediate Part 2. Uh, we were discussing the first lesson, the first essay of Book 2, that is The Dying Sun, written by Sir James Deans. In our previous lecture, we had discussed how big are stars, how uh, numerous they are in number and how vast is the universe. Today we will discuss about the possibility of life in the universe and then the creation of the planet earth and then the birth of life on planet earth. In this essay at one place Sir James Jean says life doesn't seem to have any part in the plan of the universe. Let me translate it. Sir James Jeans kehna chahte hain ke kainat banane wale ne shayad kainat ko banane ka jo uska plan tha usme zindagi ko itni ahmiyat nahi di thi insani zindagi ya jandar ki zindagi. Life does not seem to have any part in the plan of the universe. Kyun ji? Why? Sir James Jeans ne ye kyun kaha hai? Why did he say this? Because he says suitable physical conditions only make up hundred million million part of the whole universe. Sir James Jeans gives the reason that why life doesn't seem to have any part in the plan of the universe because suitable physical conditions only make up hundred million millionth part of the whole universe. What are suitable physical conditions? First of all, most important is the moderate temperature. He says, mostly there are only stars in the universe. What are stars? Stars are burning balls of fire. Stars are all fire. There is no possibility of any life on stars because any life on stars would be burnt. Anything on the stars would be burnt. Away from stars, it is extremely cold. Absolute zero. He says, there are spaces in the universe where temperature falls to minus 273.15 degree centigrade. So everything would be frozen there. By moderate temperature he means to say that the temperature should fall within the limits of keeping liquids at the state of liquid. If there is a star in the universe, suppose this is a star, around it this much area would be extremely hot. Away from this star is extremely cold, freezing. He says this is only the temperature belt where the temperature would be moderate it would be neither hot too hot nor too cold liquid should remain liquid solid should remain solid if it is closer to the star all the liquid would boil and if it is away from the stars all the liquid would be frozen so this is the first physical condition that is primary requisite of life on any planet. The second one is water, availability of water. As far as we know of some other uh, planets in our solar system, we couldn't find availability of water there. The third one is oxygen. There should be oxygen. Then there are some other uh, requirements. On the basis of these prerequisites, 
Sir James Dean says that there is very little possibility of life anywhere else in the universe. Our question then comes, how is it that there is life on the planet Earth? Not only there is life, there has been life on the planet Earth. We have been living, our ancestors have been living, and there is such a variety of life on the planet Earth. Why is it then? How was this planet created? And how did life come to exist on this planet? Sir James Jean says that it was not probably the plan of the creator. It just happened by chance. Let's see what chance is there that Sir James James is mentioning. Sir James James says that normally the stars do not come close to any other star. They are so far away from other, each other. But he says that long ago, some 2,000 million years ago, some 2,000 million years ago, it so happened that a star wandering through space came nearer to our sun. And what was the result? This star chanced to come near the sun. It rose away on the surface of the sun. And before going away, although it, it didn't collide with the sun, before going away, the tide on the surface of the sun had got so much extension from the surface of the sun that it broke into pieces. It broke into pieces and it scattered in the space. But these pieces, they did not say goodbye to their parent star. They started revolving around it at specific distances. Out of those pieces, one piece happened to be planet Earth. Initially, these pieces were very warm, very hot, but with the passage of time, they cooled down. And one of those pieces was this planet Earth. It also started revolving around this sun. Now, this piece that was separated from the sun happened, luckily happened to fall in that moderate temperature belt where liquid can stay in the form of liquid. Water would not evaporate from here, nor would it freeze. Although there are periods on this earth planet when uh, water freezes, but it is not always same. So, with the passage of time, simple organisms were born here. Sir James Jeans does not explain, he does not go into detail how simple organisms were formed here. Then next, he says, that with the passage of time further, in the development of those simple organisms, many, many thousands and millions of years after that, life became complex here. Complex living beings were developed or evolved out of those simple organisms, and finally human beings were born and human beings who have got their dreams, who have got their ambitions, who have got their hopes, who can dream, who can see, who can uh, now imagine. So this is how Sir James James says that life, uh, that planet Earth was created and then life on planet Earth was created. Next, 
Sir James Jeans tells that after knowing all these facts about the universe of the of this universe, after we come to know all these facts about the universe, what are our feelings? What who are we? Human beings living on planet Earth, and what is the proportion of planet Earth, size of planet Earth in proportion with the universe. It may not be more than this dot. It may be, it is probably smaller than this dot. So he says finally that what is our impression? What is our impression when we come to know so much about the universe? Our impression is fear. The universe is frightening. Why is the universe frightening? The universe is frightening because of the universe is frightening because of its size. In size, size of stars, number of stars, and distances. The universe is so big, immense, that it frightens us. Secondly, the universe is frightening because we are alone in the universe. We don't see any signs of life on any other planet in the universe. This frightens us. And the third thing that frightens us is time. The stretches of time. We do not know when was this universe created. We do not know how long will it last. And in comparison with the life of the universe, the life of planet Earth is very, very short. And in comparison with the life of planet Earth, the life of human beings on planet Earth is very, very short once again. So all this is frightening. Frightening for whom? Frightening for those who are standing on a millionth part of a grain of sand. One of 7.7 billion people who is standing on a millionth part of a grain of sand and he is trying to know the mysteries of the universe. And what is his first impression? In proportion with the universe, the size of the universe. And when he looks at the universe and then he looks at himself, he gets frightened and he must get frightened because of the size of the universe, because of our loneliness in the universe, and because of the stretches of time of the universe. So students, this is all about the essay, The Dying Sun. In our next lecture, uh, we will first discuss the vocabulary, some important, useful words, picked up from this lesson, uh, not only words, but some phrases as well. So, uh, thank you very much. Up till now, up till here, it is.